It's so great to have you back. Um, and, I, and I'm so excited to be speaking with you today on more tips. Um, but before that, let's have a quiz for the audience. Let's do it. So audience, we're going to have a quiz for you right now. Let's have the quiz. The question is, you need to read every word in the text to answer the questions in the reading section. Is this true or false? Audience? I think it's false because we can use skimming and scanning skill to answer the question quickly. Our audience said false. Our audience is very smart. Well done. <laughs> and that brings us to uh, the reading tips. Uh, mm -hmm. Melanie, what reading tips do you have for us this time? Okay. Well, I was actually teaching one of my classes about this yesterday evening, and we were talking about the best way to approach the reading test. Every teacher will tell you something different about skimming and scanning, for sure. But this is my opinion. What you should do is take one minute at the start of the test to skim through the main ideas in the text. And the way to do that is to look at the first sentence of every paragraph and to look for the nouns. The nouns are the ones that will tell you the content of that sentence, meaning the content of that paragraph. And if you just take one minute to do that, your brain, which is an amazing thing, will actually start to remember the key word, the key content of every paragraph. And then later, when you're scanning to find the answers, your brain will remember, ah, that topic is in paragraph C, that topic is in paragraph E. So you don't need to read every single word, but you can use skimming and scanning to be more efficient. That's wonderful. Uh, those are some great tips. I'd love to still open the floor to our audience to be able to ask you a couple of their own questions. So audience, who has a question for Melanie? My name is Lan and I come from the University of Languages and International Study. Uh, I have some problems with the speaking test, so uh, I have a question. How to expand the ideas in the speaking test if we receive the unfamiliar topics? Well, the first thing to remember that's very important is in the speaking test, there's no category for task achievement the way that there is in the writing. So that means you can slightly change the question to make it fit something you really do know about. My best suggestion to my candidates is to first of all think, can you answer the question from your perspective, something about your experience or your family? And then go a little bit further and talk about Vietnam. Do you know anything that happens with that topic in Vietnam? And can you then give an example from America or Australia or anywhere else you know about? The important thing to remember is the examiner doesn't have a perfect answer he or she wants from you. The important thing to remember is there's no task achievement mark. That means you can change the question a little bit to make it what you want to be. That's wonderful. Those are some great tips. Um, I hear that we have one more question. Who else has another question? Hello, everybody. My name is Tham, but you can call me Bean, and I'm junior in National Economics University. Uh, come here today, I have a question about speaking tests. Vietnamese people used to use many idioms and advanced vocabularies in the IELTS speaking test. So how do you think about it? Well, of course, it is important to use less common vocabulary. You can't get to a band seven unless you do that. However, you've got to be careful about memorizing or trying to memorize whole answers. If you do that, the examiner will know that it's not really natural speaking and it's not coming from you. So what's a better thing to do, from my opinion, is to memorize phrases that are true for your life. So for example, I couldn't speak a word of English until I was 14, would be a great phrase for you to memorize if it's true for you, and you can put it in any story that you tell. I would say though, less is more, 
try to sound more natural and have a mix of simple phrases as well as fixed expressions and more complex sentences. Because in the end, that's how we speak in English. So absolutely do learn some fixed expressions, do learn some phrases that are true for you. But yes, I think in general, some Vietnamese students try to do that too much and it doesn't sound natural. It sounds as if some of the answers have been memorized and you won't score higher for that. All right, well, thank you so much, Melanie. All right, so uh, before we go on to our next section, I'd love to ask you a little bit about your own opinions and experiences. Um, today's episode is about conquering, within that line of thought, um, are there certain obstacles that you had to overcome in your life? And are, are there certain experiences where it, it took you a long time to get to where you want to be? Oh, yes. I'll tell you honestly, I used to be terrified of speaking in public. I would say 10 years ago, the idea of being on a TV show would have been really frightening for me, and I would never have done it. <laughs> so I do sympathize with a lot of IELTS students who are afraid of speaking in the test or nervous about speaking in class. And I think, for me, just practice is what it took, starting with teaching bigger classes and then volunteering to speak at public events. Um, so by the time it comes now to speaking to three or four or five hundred people, which I do quite often in big events, it actually doesn't worry me at all. So absolutely, I would not be IELTS coordinator for North Vietnam if I was still afraid of public speaking. <laughs> so my advice to anybody is just practice the thing you're afraid of, if it's what you need to do to get where you want to be.